When the Soviet winter offensive began on January 12, 1945 from the Barano bridgehead, hardly anyone suspected that the Soviet armies would reach the river within a short time and even cross it in some places. Previously issued warnings by the German general staff about the Soviet provision for this offensive, Hitler had dismissed as a bluff. Accordingly, the forces provided by the Germans were far too few to successfully repel this offensive. The Soviet units were therefore able to break through the German front very quickly and reach the Oder line with almost no serious resistance. The cities of Frankfurt and Kustrin were declared a fortress. While the advance on Frankfurt, Oder to the east of the city failed at Kunersdorf, the Soviets managed to cross the frozen Oden on both sides of Kustrin and also from bridgeheads. At the end of January, Soviet tanks were already penetrating Kustrin and Kustrin and Neustadts and causing a lot of confusion everywhere. Especially among the many refugee routes that had to rely on the Kustriner bridges in order to flee westwards to the German areas. Kustrin and Neustadts was then occupied by the Soviets on February 2 to the 3rd. There is little to be read about the fighting on the Oder front in the first two weeks of February 1945 in the Wehrmacht reports. Just as little or only misleading of it in the war diary of the Colonel Command of the Wehrmacht. It may be true that they wanted to hide the seriousness of the situation on the Oder and Berlin from the Germans, this is especially true for the drafting of the Wehrmacht reports from these days. On the other hand, the daily entries in the war diary of the Colonel Command of the Wehrmacht give a deeper look, because place names are mixed up and units are often named incorrectly. All of this leaves the impression that they have somehow been overwhelmed by the events and simply no longer knew what was going on on the Oder. In addition, at the beginning of the fighting there were many units out of mostly untrained substitutes and Volkssturm units that were deployed on the river Oder and then also submitted contradicting reports. In the first and second weeks of February, the division, which was hastily led from the west, succeeded in stabilizing the front on the Oder and holding it on until mid-April 1945. In the next few videos I want to tell you about the events of the last days of January and first days of February in 1945 on the Oder and in the Oder Brew with the help of contemporary witnesses and experience reports, narratives, protocols, original documents as well as maps and archive materials. I would like to give you a comprehensive picture of the events from the German and Soviet side. Simple soldiers, experienced officers and the inhabitants of the Oderbrü will get a voice. In January 1945 we are at the beginning of the greatest battle of the Second World War that took place on German ground. But nobody knew that in January 1945. It has been winter for a few days. The fields are covered in snow. The thermometer shows a temperature of up to 10 degrees. The odor carries drift ice, smaller trenches and ponds are frozen. The military situation is becoming more and more serious. Since January 12, the Red Army has been advancing across the front towards the borders of the German Empire. There are unimaginable numbers of troops and material coming westward, rolling over the German resistance. Since there is no prospect of holding the front line, the Germans must expect a further advance by the Soviets. Already on 31st January, what should be prevented under all circumstances will happen. In the early morning hours, the first Red Army soldiers cross the Oder. They are soldiers from a Soviet advance detachment of the 5th Shock Army who cross the frozen river near Kienitz, about 15 kilometers northwest of Kustrin. During the night, like almost all of January, it was again minus 10 degrees again, so that the Oder has ice thicknesses of 25 to 40 centimeters. The landscape of the Oder Brew, covered with a touch of snow, is completely calm. When the Red Army troops occupied Kinitz on this cold morning, the population is completely surprised to see Red Army soldiers all of a sudden. 76 soldiers from a local air defense school are feeling the same way. They were captured without resistance. When the Soviets tried to get to the West Bank with tanks, they collapsed. 
So at first they only carry infantry weapons and anti-tank guns over. A little later, the bridgehead is 4 kilometers wide and 2 kilometers deep. The Soviets immediately set up for all-round defense. In the hours that followed, they mainly carried grenade launchers, light anti-aircraft guns and other anti-tank guns into the bridgehead. At around 2 p.m. there was an alarm in Kustrine, and tanks were reported arriving from the north. It is Sherman and Matilda of the tank battalion of the 2nd Guards tank army who have already reached the Oda in the morning and are now approaching Kustrine and Neustadt's while looking for a crossing. With the infantry on, they roll into the city. Only 600 meters before the Ward Bridge are they stopped by troops from various units with bazookas and melee weapons. By evening they manage to build a second bridgehead. Eight kilometers northwest of Kustrine, two infantry battalions cross the Oda near Kalansig and advance towards Jeanshmoor without any resistance. Events show that Army Group Vistula did not succeed at building a line of defense on the Oda. In the further course of events there will be bitter revenge for making the building of bridgeheads so easy for the Soviets. The next morning the German counterattacks begin. Due to a low pressure area approaching from the west, the temperature rises above zero degrees and a thaw sets in. Early in the day the Soviets managed to build another small bridgehead two kilometers north of Kienitz near Gross Neuendorf. In the course of the hazy morning, Alarm and Volkssturm units, together with parts of the 25th Panzer Grenadier Division transported up the day before, attacked these two Oder crossings. Despite considerable losses, neither Keenitz or Gross Neuendorf succeeded in retaking during the day. The counterattacks on the Jeanshmoor bridgehead were also unsuccessful. Meanwhile, in the south of Kustrine the Red Army is also directly in front of the Oder. Kustrine itself, that Hitler declared a fortress at the end of January, is overcrowded with refugees fleeing from the Red Army flooding into the city from the east in order to get there over the Oder. With their few belongings tied on horse-drawn carts and strollers, they trudge through the mud-covered streets of the city. They are forwarded to the west in the direction of Silo as quickly as possible. The inhabitants of the city are also evacuated, especially since the Soviets begin shelling the city during the day and penetrate the Kustrina Neustadts from the east. Around noon on February 1st, Soviet advance detachments hit the Oda south of Kustrine, where they crossed the river with makeshift tools to form a new bridgehead. They occupied several isolated buildings near the river. Then patrols advance through the misty valley on Rietwine. The village is located at the northern end of the Rietwine spur of a 4 km long and 2 km wide ridge that rises steeply 40 to 50 meters from the Oderbrew Valley and is therefore of strategic importance. There the Soviets are appearing on the eastern and northeastern outskirts of Rietwine and search the first houses.